welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to Immersion Plus for many people who are tuning in for the first time today. My name is David Borean from NEC Australia, New Zealand, and I'm really delighted to just welcome our next speaker for today. So creating value and better experiences for consumers remains such a critical component of technology. The new era of 5G has um, so many interesting things, exciting things to offer. Global markets, certainly the Australian market, it's very much been publicised quite um, significant recently and with unprecedented levels of engagement and access. But at what cost? Um, there's so much discussion in the marketplace at, at present. So what if 5G open VRAN could provide customers more flexibility, more scalability, and certainly greater cost efficiency, and using the best of breed partners in an ecosystem to deliver different experiences? Well, today I'm really delighted to welcome um, from NEC Japan, uh, Mayuko Tadawaki to present her presentation on 5G, A New Horizon Awaits. Thanks Tadawaki-san for joining us today. Thank you, David, for the introduction. Hello, um, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Tariwaki and I am General Manager of Service Provider Solution Division based in Tokyo. So today I have the opportunity to talk about NEC's proposition for 5G. And uh, I will talk about how this new generation of mobile technology brings new horizons to the society that we live in. But before I do that, I wanted to get you a little bit more familiar with NEC in the world of communication in the service provider space. In case you're wondering, what is NEC doing in Australia for communications? You may be surprised to know that actually you could be in touch with NEC's technology without really noticing. Okay, so let's go. So I want to start and go back to that fire that hit Australia recently. So this is a picture of our radio link communication system, which supported the bushfire season response. The NSW, VIC, and ACT emergency services networks are built on our gear, over 400 systems. During this year's bushfire season, emergency services in these regions were communicating and coordinating the response using NEC equipment installed in the government radio networks. And also, if you woke up this morning and picked up your iPhone and connected to a server, a website, uh, which was overseas, maybe that communication was done over NEC's submarine network system. On July 6 this year, we announced the successful completion of the Japan, Guam, Australia, North Cable System, which spans for 2,700 kilometers. So NEC's technology is providing services in your lives, even when you do not notice. So putting that aside, let's now go to the, our subject for today, which is 5G. You may all know that almost every 10 years, our mobile network migrates to its next generation. And NEC has been involved in this journey ever since the 80s with our analog mobile handsets and all the way up to the 4G infrastructure. But what is important is that NEC has not just been following the technology, but driving standardization and innovation as an industry leader. But from user perspective, when we reach the 4G with smartphones and Netflix and online gaming, what do you think? Some of you may have thought, well, what more can come? You know, do we really need anything more? Well, guess what? The evolution never stops. And as David has uh, introduced, 5G is already real in 2020 in Australia as well. According to the report, 81 operators across 42 countries and territories have launched 5G services in the world today, including your providers in Australia. In the map here, the blue countries shown have already launched the 5G services, and the purple ones are in investment phase for launch. Some of you audience may have already experiencing the services as of today. But what we want to know is the potential of 5G. What can it do which we have not experienced yet? We envisage that the real value of 5G will become visible when we can experience new services such as self-driving cars, 
virtual stadium sport viewing, customized shopping experience, and just-in-time delivery of ordered goods. These are more complex than just smartphones. We're expecting these services to come up in the next one to three years. But let me show you some of the use cases which NEC is working on. This is a use case in Japan where NEC is doing proof of concept with a chemical manufacturer. As you know, Japan is suffering from the issue of aging society and shortage of experienced and skilled workforce. NEC has implemented a complete 5G-enabled factory system for robotics and automation, anomaly detection, and prevention of anomalies, and remote assistance by skilled engineers to tackle this issue. The test results are showing that may over 20% of improvement can be achieved in productivity. Another use case. Whoops. Yes, another use case. This is a 5G in use of virtual reality. NEC has implemented private 5G into the training center of a Japanese airline company called All Nippon Airways. The trainees are connected to a virtual reality system via sensors and goggles, and their movements and performance are measured and analyzed real time to give feedback on how they are performing, like posture, hand and eye movement. And this is supporting the development of young pilots in the airline. So I've spoken a little bit about some of the use cases and user scenes of the new 5G services. Although we're excited to think about the new ways of work and life we can enjoy, we have to think about the flip side of things. What enabled these services in 5G? You may have noticed that the key here is many different devices and terminals, such as sensors, connected together onto the network from all different origins. It is not just smartphones, but it could be lamp posts or office device or shelves from supermarkets. This kind of network becomes increasingly complex and requires flexibility to conform to the user scenario. Communication service providers need to cope with this challenge of increased complexity and necessity for efficiency. Communication service providers may need to transform the way they build network, to innovate their network with new technology and to move fast with this trend. In order to solve the issues of such complexity in a network and sharp increase of traffic with massive connected devices, NEC proposes open RAN or the disaggregated radio access network. In the legacy 4G world shown on the left side, vendors used to offer a vertically integrated system where all network elements were built in-house from a single manufacturer. This had the disadvantage of being less flexible and sometimes less efficient since everything was dependent on a particular company. In the open architecture world, which NEC is presenting on the right, service providers are able to choose from a plethora of multiple vendors, i.e. in best of breed approach, and build the most suitable network which support the need of the many use cases. This brings flexibility as well as cost efficiency. In such a multi-vendor scenario, where does NEC bring value? NEC is a manufacturer and supplier of many elements which service provider needs for 5G service, which is shown in the blue here, such as ORAN compliant radio unit shown in the bottom, and applications using the suite of artificial intelligence technology shown in the middle. But the most important value here that NEC offers is a multi-vendor catalog from which your customers can choose from. And not only that, we provide the necessary system integration and testing to ensure the network quality. NEC is very unique in its position being threefold. One, being the radio vendor. Two, being the solution provider, including applications. And three, a system integrator of partner products. Our ambition is to drive open architecture innovation within the industry for flexible 5G services. NEC has already experienced in promoting this open RAN. Um, 
we have customer use cases and testimonials shown on this page. On the left-hand side is NTT Docomo. Docomo started as early as 2019 July to utilize open architecture. You may view them as being a very traditional and legacy service provider, but in the past few years, they have decided to embrace openness and they have included NEC as a partner to go into this direction. They have moved to Open RAN. On the right-hand side, you see Rakuten Mobile, a new service provider in Japan starting operation from March 2020. Their network is completely arc open architecture and virtualized from scratch. NEC is contributing to their network in the RAN, the core, the BSS, and also for their system integration. So to summarize, here is our value proposition in the 5G world. The market is looking for an alternative and flexible player in the 5G arena, and we are proposing open architecture to service providers. We are driving world-leading solutions with industry-defined open standards with real customer use cases. And our key is the social value creation through collaboration with multiple industry partners and players. Having said this, now that the service providers have an alternative choice for open architecture for 5G, the question is this, how to choose the right partner you can build? So in the 5G world where zillions of devices are connected globally from everywhere to your network, of course, having cutting edge technology is essential. However, maybe more importantly, your vendor of choice needs to be trustable secure and transparent so that you can put the network into their hands. Trusted, maybe supersedes technology in some cases. And how do you define a trustable company? Well, maybe there are several ways of due diligence, but we believe that one aspect which defines the credibility of a company is the lifespan of the company. Here we show an example list of some of the world's oldest companies ranging from a German brewery built in the ninth century, all the way up to a construction company built in year 578. It seems that Japan has a position in a longevity of companies, and this we interpret as one of the important aspects of trust, i.e. built to last, quote unquote, is an evidence of having earned customers' trust over the years. NEC, which celebrates 120th anniversary last year, traces its roots to up to the communications. We have created value, various social values that underpin the world's communications infrastructures, including the satellite TV broadcast of the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. And while we're on the subject, we will also touch a little bit about NEC in Australia. We arrived in Australia in the 60s in 1969 with the official establishment of NEC Australia. And ever since then, for over 50 years, our journey has been with the people and the society of Australia to enrich the lives. As a summary, NEC is offering a new value to the 5G world by open architecture. And today I leave you with the phrase, a new horizon awaits. I have prepared a little video, so let's go to the video. Five G is now. We're in a world where massive data flows in real time between the physical and the virtual. And fast, intelligent connectivity enabled by 5G will create significant economic and social value. The way we work, live, and play will change dramatically. Driving this change is the value chain innovation of industries that will realize a continuous personalized experience for people. In other words, a new value journey. This is the future that we envision with NEC Smart Connectivity. Let's take a look at how this future may look like. Here we see Nick on his way home from work. As 5G networks connect to other forms of connectivity solutions, 
cars will become just another connected device, and its ownership will shift to shared mobility. Hello, Nick. Hi. Will you be going to the stadium today as planned? Yeah, I will. We will arrive in 34 minutes. You'll have time to settle down in your seat before the games begin. By continuously sensing real-time traffic, a stable optimized traffic management can be achieved. One day, we may even see roads without traffic lights. Will pedestrians be safe? Yes, they will. Because on these roads, people are the top priority. And 5G will also change how we shop. And um, I want some new tennis shoes for a line myself. OK, how about some high-performance clay soles to match next week's court? Sounds great. And um, I want the color to be Ella's favorite. Shall I have them delivered when you get home? Thanks. Could you place the order? Certainly. In the field of manufacturing and logistics, dynamic changes to the delivery processes will make possible a flexible production of a larger variety of products in smaller quantities. Production lines will make rapid adjustments. And goods seamlessly delivered to the customer when and where it is needed. Meanwhile, Ella is at home. IoT sensors can track your condition, so depending on your vitals and preferences, meals can be prepared using ideal ingredients. I'd like to have dinner at the stadium. Today, I recommend a dinner with fish and seasonal vegetables. Okay, that sounds wonderful. It will contain optimal vitamins and minerals to match your condition. Food traceability from production to delivery ensures food safety and quality. And do you agree to opt in and share your digital ID with the new catering service to place the order? Yes, I agree. And we can choose to share personal information so that personalized services can be enjoyed. Your chef for today will be Chris. Okay, Chris. Looking forward to some amazing food. Ella. You need to start work in two minutes. OK, I'll be ready. Work as we know it will also change. Take construction. Regardless of gender and age, skilled workers can operate construction machinery remotely from home. People can focus on where human sensitivity and creativity are needed. I have shaped the slope, so it's ready for the next procedure. Procedure initiated. And autonomous machines will enable remote 24-hour construction. Your bus to the tennis stadium will be coming in four minutes. OK, thanks. As autonomous buses become more common, it will be the people's mobility of choice. Stadiums with 5G connectivity will elevate spectator sports experience. And by efficiently linking authenticated data over the network, delivery of goods directly to the customer when and where it is needed can be achieved. And when watching sports, AR adds to the experience with 5G and high-performance edge computing. Imagine being able to take a close look from multiple angles in real time. After an exciting game, you don't want to be caught in a traffic jam, do you? Don't worry. Public transport will be dispatched flexibly to adapt to people's schedule, so Nick and Ella are able to head home hassle-free. While in urban cities, Public transport will be integrated into an efficient logistics network, carrying goods or people. 
A sharing economy will enable optimal delivery suited to the time and destination. Nice shoes. Thank you, Nick. It will make me even better. One day, I'll get to win over you. Really? 5G is the key connecting the physical and the virtual, allowing unlimited data to circulate through ultra-fast uplink and downlink. NEC technologies integrated with 5G can enable highly secure innovative services beyond what we've just seen. NEC Smart Connectivity. Orchestrating a brighter world. NEC. Katawaki-san, thank you very much for your really interesting presentation today. Um, we have experienced a little bit of a lag time. I know that we were getting some comments uh, just on the lag of the video, and uh, we apologise for, for those people that were tuning in that did get some lag. The video and the presentation will be available um, quite shortly in the next 48 hours on this platform. In fact, everything that you've seen today in this platform is available for the next three months, so the content uh, all the live presentations, the, um, the various uh, pieces of the assets, if you like, the videos and so forth, that uh, have brought so much insight from each of the presenters will all be available for the next three months. Um, Tadawaki-san, we're taking a quick 15 second poll um, after each presenter, just around uh, what people felt um, the uh, presentation brought for them. So there's three very quick questions we're asking everyone. That's appearing on the screen now for most people. So if people are seeing this for the first time, there are three questions. Did this presentation add value to you today? Just a naught to five. Uh, just a quick click in the box there. Uh, I'm now more informed about the subject matter. And again, just a naught to five. And um, I'd like to know more about this subject. So if you just take a moment to fill out that poll, we'll be back in uh, about uh, 20 seconds or so. While I uh, wait for those results to come through, uh, please don't forget to look in for those that are joining us for the first time in the exhibition hall. There are so many um, different exhibits that are there from our sponsors, our partners, and from NEC. We've got good insights. For example, there are some insights on 5G um, that are part of the vertical markets that we represent. Um, all of those exhibitions are available, again, on this platform for the next three months. So if you do miss out on anything that's either, either downloadable to your own, um, own, own, own email, you can come back and visit that on the platform. So let's take a quick look at the poll to see how people um, felt about that presentation. So um, Tadawaki-san, we have, for the first question, did the presentation add value to you today? Well. You know, we're talking about 90 uh, or 80, 86 percent or so, 87 percent of people said it certainly did. And you can see the vast majority for question two um, certainly were more informed now about the subject matter. So thank you very much for sharing. Um, and the vast majority, over 80 percent, would definitely like to know more about the subject. And I think you've uh, given us a great insight into 5G today. I think for some people who might be new to the technology, They've got so much more depth and breadth, and we'd like to certainly continue this conversation uh, beyond today. If you do want to uh, speak to anyone, uh, there are people inside our Meet the Speakers uh, virtual lounge right now who can continue this conversation with you. And Tadawaki-san, thank you very much for your time today, joining us from Japan. We really do appreciate it. It was a pleasure being here, and thank you for the great audience. Have a great rest of the, the presentations and the, um, Congratulations on a successful uh, event today. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Coming up soon, we've got uh, Sarah Armstrong-Smith um, from Microsoft. So please click through the auditorium to uh, connect with that presentation. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.